My name is Ruby Guyett. I'm a graduate of Linfield College, and I am here today with Rich Schmidt, our Director of Archives. Today is the 24th of June, 2019, and we are here at Linfield College, and we are interviewing Virginia Youngin, who is in Central Point, Oregon. So, hello, Virginia. That's correct. That's correct. All right. <laughs> hello, everybody. <laughs> So we'd like to begin by asking you just to tell us a little bit about your background, where you were from, and what your family life was like before Linfield. Well, I'm from Emmett, Idaho. I mean, that was where I was born. And um, my, I had a mother and father and four and three sisters. Um, and I was the eldest. Uh, and I'm now, uh, I mean... <laughs> Uh, let's see, that was in, I was born in 1925, so that makes me 93 now. <laughs> <laughs> what, did your, what, uh, what did your parents do? My father was a mill worker, a sawmill worker, and my mother stayed at home and took care of us girls, but she, would, she had been a school teacher. And where, where did you go to high school, Virginia? I went to school in uh, high school in Emmett, Idaho, and graduated at the top 5% of my class. Okay. Um, I, lo I was a very, very good student, <laughs> I must say. <laughs> and uh, and I, never, I hardly ever missed a day of school. <laughs> I loved school. <laughs> So what made you decide to go to college, and what specifically made you decide to go to Linfield? Well, my pastor, uh, the First Baptist Church pastor, was uh, anxious to help we Haynes girls. Uh, my maiden name was Haynes, H-A-Y-N-E-S. And uh, he was interested in helping all of us girls find a place to go to college. And I think he must have sent in my name to Linfield College because we were Baptists and the, at that time the Baptists were really supporting Linfield College. I, I don't know if you've heard that before, but it was... <laughs> we have. Uh, yes. <laughs> and uh, so I think he must have recommended me because then a, a professor came to visit me and offered me a scholarship, mm -hmm. came to my humble home in Idaho <laughs> and <laughs> offered, uh, offered a scholarship I don't think it was very big, but in those days, scholarships weren't very big. <laughs> it, um, things were different in those days. We just, there wasn't a lot of money. No one had a lot of money. And we were quite poor, actually. We didn't have much. Um, with my father's work, he was uh, not well paid. <laughs> And so my mother didn't work either. So anyway, so that was, and he had, uh, we had gone through the depression, which was very, very difficult. And uh, my folks would not go on relief from the government. So because they just didn't want to take government money. And uh, so we didn't have, we had very little actually. We had a little acreage, which we had chickens and a cow. And so we were managed to get by with enough food, but this was right after the Depression, of course. This was 1943 um, when I graduated from college, or from high school, I mean. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So was the, was the first time you saw Linfield, was it, was it when you showed up there as a freshman? Yes, tell me what that's your, correct. Tell me what your first impressions were. Well, I was very excited about it all, and the or, of course, the first week or two, I was very homesick <laughs> because I'd hardly ever been away from home. And uh, it was 500 miles away, of course, and I just couldn't go home every weekend like some of the kids do, did. But, uh, and there weren't many people from Idaho visiting or going to college at Linfield. And uh, <clears throat> uh, my mother took, the bu took me on the bus to Linfield so she was with me the first day or two I was there, and uh, we, I stayed in Failing Hall my first year, and uh, I, I enjoyed it really after I got over the homesickness. 
I got so busy that uh, I didn't have time to be homesick. But I made a lot of friends. I had some wonderful friends that I still um, remember very well, but they're all, pretty much of them are passed away by now. Um, so what was it like to be a student at Linfield during the war? Well, during the war, uh, you know, I was I arrived there in 1940, the fall of 43, and uh, there were no any men on the campus because uh, they were most of them were in the service of some kind, military service, and the ones that people who were not uh, had some disability that uh, they would allow them to be in the service. Or maybe they were conscientious objectors. Mm -hmm. So those were the people, and they were made very usually very nice people. And I made a lot of friend, men friends, even though there weren't many of them around. <laughs> but I had a lot of girlfriends, and uh, we we had little groups that met for the fun of it, that just ran around together. <laughs> Do you, do you remember the war being a, a fairly kind of constant presence in your life? Did you hear a lot of news about it? Were you talking about it a lot? No. We, uh, actually, I think we were rather protected there at Linfield. Uh, we didn't hear very much because, of course, there, were no, no tele there was no television mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in those days. And, of course, the only news we got was on the radio. And... Uh, I was pretty busy. I had to, I worked all the way through. I cleaned the administration building and I cleaned the bathrooms in in both Sailing and uh, Grover Hall and the administration buildings bathrooms. That that was the way I got through college. Mm. <laughs> and there was a woman that advertised that she'd like to have some girl come and clean her apartment on Saturday mornings, so I got the job. <laughs> I cleaned her apartment for $3 a day. Wow. <laughs> and, and I did a lot of, you know, hard work mm -hmm. <laughs> cleaning her apartment, but that was all right. And that was on Saturday mornings. That wasn't all year, all four years, but I think it was at least one of those years. Mm -hmm. I can't remember which year it was. But I didn't hear much about the war uh, in answer to your question. Mm -hmm. um, the only time we ever realized that there was a war on was the fact that uh, we did have our ration cards. Mm -hmm. uh, my, we had to take our ration cards with us when we went to college. And uh, we had to turn those in uh, so that the college could buy food. Oh, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. I don't think uh, that's that was too well known at the time. I mean, now, I don't think we, many people remember that. Yeah, I don't think we've actually heard anybody tell us that so far. Mm -hmm. huh. Well, uh, that was, I think it was required to bring your ration, whatever you would have at home, whatever you would, your family would have at home, you would uh, take your share of at home uh, to the college where mm -hmm. they could use it. Yeah. That's what I remember by. That's what I remember anyway. <laughs> yeah. Were you involved in any campus clubs or social activities? Well, yes. I I, I belong to the Christian Service League. We called it CSL, and we we met on Sunday nights and had kind of a meeting and a vespers. It was a very nice small club, and uh, later on, I well the. the first year I did join a sorority, Kappa Alpha Phi, and uh, it was mostly Christian girls who all trooped together and walked together to church every Sunday morning, and uh, I just, uh, we just had wonderful times together, uh, the, the girls that I knew there and, uh, in that sorority. It wasn't a national sorority, it was a local. Right. Yeah. So, what did you study while you were at Linfield? What kinds of classes do you remember taking? Well, I remember taking psychology the first year, of course, and it was a doctor or who was very strict 
words, and he really shocked me in some of the things he said because I'd never heard some of those things. But uh, anyway, I I learned a lot, and then I was really interested in English. And I, my mother was always a, she liked the words, and she used to quote poetry a lot when I was just a young girl. And I, I just got very interested in English and grammar and that sort of thing. And so, and I had a wonderful high school teacher who also did that. And so that was my major. I became, I was a major in English and English literature because of mostly my background. Did you spend any time during your Linfield experience off campus? Did you go to any major cities like Portland, for example? Well, the only time I did go to Portland, or actually Vancouver, was during the summer, the summer of 45, 1945. Uh, that was the summer the end, the, that the war ended. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was, I needed to make more, some money. So I was, a girlfriend of mine had a father who ran a turkey, uh, uh, not a turkey farm, but a turkey processor. Mm -hmm. And he invited me to, he and his daughter, uh, his da I stayed with his daughter while she and I went and worked in the turkey processing plant, mm -hmm. plucking turkeys. <laughs> and it was a terrible job, <laughs> I'll have to admit. <laughs> It was a terrible job, but I was earning money, and I had I had to earn some money, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, that same summer after the I think after working there for a while, uh, I also got a job as a childcare uh, person for the people who for the women who worked on the sh in the shipyards, mm -hmm. and um, so I we took care of their children. Mm -hmm. uh, until the end of the war. And then, then, then that fall, of course, I went back to college. Did it feel like your experience was, was fairly typical in terms of finding a lot of odd jobs to work your way through school? Was that what most of your friends were doing as well? I think so. Uh, I think it was fairly common. Uh, uh, I don't think many of my friends had to work, however, in uh, for example, my roommate came from a wealthy family, mm -hmm. and uh, I remember thinking uh, she went to Portland one one weekend just to buy clothes, and she spent a hundred dollars. And to me, that was a lot of money, a hundred dollars for for clothing. And I was using the same clothing all year, the same skirt and blouse, <laughs> and uh, I. They would see me ironing and washing my same clothes over and over, and I didn't think about think too much about it. That's the way we always did. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, I didn't. Uh, she was one who didn't have to work at all, and uh, she just went home during the vacations, and that was okay. I I kept a track of her all these years, and she just passed away. Mm -hmm. uh, just a last month so so i'm i've kept uh, we've written to each other every christmas so oh. that's amazing mm -hmm. yeah. yeah it's a long time did you go home to back to idaho during vacations uh just no uh two of the summers i one summer uh dr pollard I don't know if you know who he was, but mm -hmm. his name was Hybert Pollard, and he was a, my religion teacher. And uh, he was very kind to me, uh, and he set me up to go on a deputation team up to up into Washington to conduct Bible schools for the churches, small churches in Washington. And so that was one summer that I spent traveling. Uh, in New Oregon and Washington uh, with the team and conducting Bible schools and I was just one of the Sunday school teachers that, that did that mm -hmm. and then uh, he gave me uh, I earned a hundred dollars that summer just doing that <laughs> <laughs> and to me that was a lot of money but uh, they paid our way mm -hmm. 
and then besides that, he gave one time he called me into his office and he says, I know you're not going to have much money to spend, so here's $10 for you to buy a milkshake here once in a while if you want one. <laughs> so, <laughs> so anyway, he was so very... He, he was very kind to me, <laughs> and to me that was very that was just a wonderful gesture. <laughs> I know it sounds funny. It sounds funny these days because a milkshake could cost that much these days. <laughs> tell me, tell me what the what the mood was like on campus uh, while you while you were on campus before the war ended. Was it uh, was it fairly people just staying busy and mostly happy, or was it kind of d different than you expected? No, I think it was mostly happy actually. Uh, I sang in a, a special a trio mm -hmm. at one time um, that was called the Linfield Trio, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and we went to different places and sang and. You know, different uh, organizations and sang, and uh, we just had a wonderful time. I I enjoyed my whole experience at Linfield. I felt it was a happy, very happy time in my life, and I never felt uh, I never felt uh, out of place or anything like that. Um, I just felt contented there. And uh, I, when I was a junior, I felt I had to stop school because I ran out of money. I didn't have any spending money at all. And every all my working experience there went into my tuition or went, went into room and board or whatever they used it for. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I never saw a penny of that. So I, put, I went to my dean of women, Mrs. Anderson, her name was, that, and I said, I, I think you probably have her name. <laughs> is that Colina, uh, Colina Anderson? Colina Anderson, yes. Colina Anderson, and she was so she was just a lovely woman and very kind to me. And I said to her, I think I'm going to have to quit school. I just don't have any money, and I'm going to have to go to work in order to finish out. And this was when I was a junior. And she said to me, oh, don't, don't make any quick decisions now. Let's just wait a minute, uh, wait a little while, and... <laughs> She said, in a few days, will you go and look on the, tele on the bulletin board in, in the administration building, actually, where I was working every day, um, and uh, see if there's a note for you there on the bulletin board. So I did. I checked it every day, and finally there was a note for me to, uh, to report to the president's office. That was President Dillon at the time. And... Um, and she, and I did. I went into his, knocked on the door, and went into his office. And he said, "Well, there's a lady from Idaho who has given money to the college to be used for an Idaho girl, and this will be enough to finish out your 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 year. Well, actually, it was my next year. This was in the middle of end of my junior year, and so I had enough to get through the next." My, my senior year wow. That's awesome. because of this money, this money that a lady from Idaho had furnished. Mm -hmm. So I just was so grateful to be able to stay yeah. and finish out my college career. Wow. That's amazing. <laughs> amazing. It was amazing. I just, and they, they said, we want you to stay. You know, of course, I was, I was a good student. I was not being a disgrace to the college or anything, so, <laughs> so I think they wanted me to stay. <laughs> so I, I felt very happy about that, that I could say, stay and not have to go home, but quit college and go to work somewhere, because yeah. I knew I'd may maybe not be able to come back. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about how the mood on campus changed once the war was over and Yes, I can tell, tell you that. Um, I remember seeing these men come back from college, and they looked so sophisticated and experienced. And, uh, you know, they, I was actually afraid of them uh, because they, they just were older, and uh, they didn't look like the, the boys that I was used to seeing around mm -hmm. campus. And uh, so uh, it was uh, the mood changed a little bit, yes, because they were... They were seriously 
looking for an education by that time. They, of course, they were on the GI Bill, and they were coming back to, to get their college degree. And I think they were just, some of them were much older and more sophisticated, and I, we were just, we girls were kind of <laughs> afraid to afraid of them in a way because they seem so uh, worldly wise maybe mm. that was that was my impression yeah was it in, was it interesting watching the, the the campus itself change in terms of uh, you know married married student housing and children on campus yes, and things that's like true. that yes uh -huh. there was some of that it happened really more after i left the college mm -hmm. than than it did while i was there because uh this is 1940, well, it was happening, it was starting to happen, mm -hmm. yes, mm -hmm. uh, because some of them were married, were beginning to get married at that time, and then children were coming, mm -hmm. And uh, but they had to uh, build another building on there because of the married students that were coming on the mm -hmm. campus, so mm -hmm. that's true. I kind of, I think I was more concentrating on getting my degree than, than noticing too much of that, actually. Fair enough. <laughs> mm -hmm. Do you remember any of the special events that happened on campus, like the May Day celebrations? Well, yes. Um, I don't remember a lot about it, however. Okay. Um, let's see. Uh, I remember there was a dance, and I had never danced at home. Uh, my church kind of frowned on it, <laughs> but uh, when somebody invited me, one of the boys invited me to go to a dance, and that was late in the, that was probably when I was a junior. And uh, that was about, about the first dance I ever had, I think, at Linfield. Mm -hmm. Uh, this is probably after the young, uh, after the uh, soldiers came back, because suddenly dancing was allowed, mm -hmm. and I think it was partly because people were going off campus to go to dances, and <laughs> and uh, because none were allowed on campus at, at that time until until that. I think I was a junior, mm -hmm. or maybe I might have been a senior. I'm not sure. But uh, that's the only thing I can think of. We just, there weren't a lot of activities as far as, uh, except for the sororities that I was involved with. And, you know, we had parties once in a while and church things. I sang in the church choir. Um, and those things were more important to me than anything else, I guess. <laughs> Um, if I could go back just a little bit, I wanted to ask sure. you, since you were in high school when Pearl Harbor happened, what was your reaction to that event and the United States entering the war? Oh, it was, uh, we had drills, uh, you know, bomb, people were worried about being bombed, and this was in Idaho, which, you know, was not likely to be bombed, but... <laughs> On, on the other hand, uh, we had drills to uh, teach us what to do in case there was a bomb attack or anything like that. And I remember one of my classmates, his name was, um, oh, I can't think of his first name, but his last name was Hosoda, and he was a Japanese boy, and he was called into the service for America, and he was killed. Mm -hmm. And I, I was so, I was so upset about that because here, here he was going into um, the service to fight for America, and he was killed, mm -hmm. and uh, by the Japanese, I guess. I, I don't remember what happened, <laughs> who he was killed by, but, but I, it was a bad. Uh, 1941 was a scary year. Yeah. Uh, and my dad. Um, was a neighborhood, uh, let's see, I think he had to watch for, you had to cover your windows with dark cloth so that the bombers couldn't see you and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. 
I think that, of course, he lived out in the country, but I don't, I think he did it in the city. But I just don't remember too much about it. That's been a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I just remember that uh, it was a terrible time. Uh, that 41, we all were concerned about the, the war, of course. And my folks listened to it constantly on the radio. Is that how you got most of your news, the radio? That's how we got our news, yes, uh, on the radio. Uh-huh. So, Virginia, I'd like to jump, sort of jump back here. Uh, tell us what you did with your Linfield degree and kind of about your life after Linfield. Uh, well, I got a degree in uh, um, English literature, and um, the, the college gave me a, got me set up with a job in Toledo, Oregon, as a high school teacher. <clears throat> and I taught English and speech <clears throat> at that high school in Toledo. Oregon uh, for two years and then I was you know in those days we had to have a fifth year <clears throat> in order to teach high school <clears throat> and so I took my fifth year at University of Oregon and uh, then I went then I got a job as a teacher in Ontario Oregon I took that job for three years and then I got married <laughs> I, I met I met my husband in Ontario and uh, uh, so and he he was working on his master's degree at that time. So we moved back to Corvallis, <clears throat> where he was working on his master's degree, and then he was, got his <clears throat> got a job in Medford as an agronomist on the experiment station. Mm -hmm. And we've been here ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and he's and he's passed. He passed away a year ago, a year and a half ago. Sorry and I'm missing, I'm missing him terribly. <laughs> yeah. Sorry to 64 hear that. years, 64 years of marriage. Wow, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. We had three nice, we have three wonderful kids, okay. so I'm very thankful. Yeah. And I, I really miss, uh, I sometimes think about the years at Linfield, and I really think Linfield was... A kind of a wake up to me. I was just a little country girl in Idaho, and uh, and I just I just blossomed at Linfield. I think yeah. I think it was a it was an opening opened to a lot of doors for me. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. So, do you have any advice for today's students that you would like to share? <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, I, I just think you have to remember your, remember what you were taught as a child and stay with it. <laughs> uh, if, you, if you were taught good things, which I was, <laughs> but I don't know. I, of course, I'm a, I'm a Christian, and I just feel like uh, it's it's important to remember your faith and do your best job. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's hard for me to say what uh, I see people making mistakes these days with, <laughs> with their education. But, uh, but you know, you have to learn by doing. I think that's important. But uh, I don't think I'm capable of giving advice. <laughs> <laughs> I have wonderful kids, and they're, they've all done well, and they've all done you know, treated me wonderfully well. They're they're so helpful right now to me since I'm alone now, and uh, I finally have three great grandchildren, so I'm Aww. just doing fine. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Well, we have one last question that we like to end interviews with. Unless there's anything else that you'd like to share with us. Well, I'm trying trying to think if there was anything, but it seemed like I feel like I've covered pretty much everything. Okay. Um, so go ahead with your question. You've been very kind so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I, this I, is... I promise I won't ruin that by this next question. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the last question we like to ask everyone we interview is: What immediately comes to your mind when you hear the word Linfield? 
Oh. <clears throat> you know, I just think of a happy place where I was, and, uh, and I learned a lot. And uh, the, te- the professors were all very kind to me. I can remember all their names, even. Uh, Horace Terrell, who was my English teacher, was so good. And Hybert Pollard, who was so kind to me. And Leslie Lester Taylor, who was um, the choir... He was in the choir at uh, the church, and he was also my chemistry teacher, and I almost almost flunked chemistry. Uh, but he, he invited, I have, to, I have to add this little thing, he invited me and a few other students to his home to help us, to help with certain problems we had in chemistry, and his wife would uh, make tea for us in, the be- in chemistry beakers. <laughs> <laughs> and she was uh, she was so kind, and he was so kind to us. Uh, and I sang tenor with him in the in the high school in the uh, <laughs> in the church choir. He was next he was next to me in singing tenor. I used to sing tenor. <laughs> uh, and in the church choir, uh, in the high, in the college choir, since there were very few men. I was asked to sing tenor <laughs> along along with the men because there weren't enough men. <laughs> <laughs> That's an incredible story. <laughs> yeah. Well, the, another. I'm thinking of another story. All of a sudden, here, uh, the choir got to travel to Idaho and Salt Lake, or anyway, into, into Utah. We got to travel one year, uh, and we were. I think we went to Boise for one place, and we. I think I still have pictures in uh, in one of my albums of the choir uh, singing in different places in in Idaho and in uh, Utah maybe, and we had a wonderful trip. I think the name of our uh, professor was Ray, uh, Dr. Ray. R H E E I E A, I think, and then there was another one. Dr. Eschbach mm. was a choir teacher, choir leader, and we had a good choir. We had a wonderful choir, really. Mm. I was very proud of it. That was one of the things we did. I, you were asking about activities, and that's one of the activities that I really enjoyed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, I, I guess I run out of stories probably, but <laughs> I don't, I don't want, I don't want to bore you with too many. <laughs> no, we love them. We're, no. ne- we're never bored by your stories. I'm never bored. <laughs> well, thank you so much for speaking with us. We really, really appreciate it, and it's been lovely to talk to you. Well, I've enjoyed it too. I, it makes me think, you know, you brought back some memories to me. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I don't. You, sorry, go ahead. Well, there, I see there was a a note on my uh, on the on the pages that you sent me about the scope of per- permission. Yes, the permission slip. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Do you want me to send that back to you or what? Yes, uh, please. Please sign it and then send it back to the return address because we need that to uh, publish the interview online. Oh, okay. All right. I'll do that. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. Uh, all right. Well, thank you for calling. I just uh, enjoyed talking to you. You've been very, uh, appreci- you've been very kind to me, and I, I enjoyed telling you my stories. Well, we really enjoyed hearing them. Thank you, Virginia. <laughs> we had a lovely time talking to you. Thank you. All right. Thank you for calling. Bye. Bye. Bye.